everyone, welcome back to my channel. This is Heike and you're watching Stone Cold Coffee Crafts and yay! First tube in time, hopefully, if I manage to upload this. <laughs> it's my biggest challenge right now. Um, today, hopefully, for you should be the 29th. I am filming this, of course, a day ahead, so for me it is Wednesday the 28th. And this is the second floss tube for July 2021 and my second half of all the stitch alongs I can do. <laughs> so, as always, in the second half of the month, I have three projects to show you. I also happen to have a furry assistant ragdoll cat um, by the name of Lola, and you can't see her right now, but she is here. There she is, her big head, big fluffy, fluffy head. Um, she's feeling much more herself again, thankfully. So I'm I'm happy that she is slowly but surely getting back into form. It is slow this time, but on the other hand, um, how did the boyfriend put it? You have to remember, she is no longer a spring chicken, which is true. And thankfully she doesn't know what a spring chicken is, or she would have given me the glare of death right now. <laughs> so, yeah, floss tube. Um, I have the Animal Crossing Stitch Along by Stuart Cunningham to show you, which is on the screen right now. We had our drop for July, which was the Mabel Sisters, and I've seriously forgotten their names. Um, which is also part due to the fact that I play Animal Crossing in German and the names are different in English and German for the characters. Um, but I've, I've seriously, I think one of them is called Maple. But I don't know what the other one is called. Uh, these two own the um, clothing shop in Animal Crossing and they are stinking, stinking cute. Um, as always, actually. <laughs> I have found myself procrastinating on this stitch along, um, to be fully honest, because it has so many fractional stitches. These little boxes are very small. They are really, really tiny and Stuart just manages to press so much into them, but it comes at the cost of an insane amount of fractional stitching. Everything from one over, yeah, well, one over one, but I'm stitching it um, two over one ten stitch as quarter stitches or um, three quarter stitches. He does a lot of those. Yeah, it's it's insane, and even though I always like the result, maybe except of the box for last month, because I'm still not sold on on their faces. The back stitching just blends in way too much, I think. So another one of these cases where I'm seriously thinking about going back in and changing things, even though that means I have to pull out things, and this is also delicate. But yeah, don't mind me. So I it just started seriously procrastinating on this. So the the drops come in on the 15th and I think I did not start this one until a week later. I think it took me a week this time to put in my bigger pants because I wanted to catch up on it for floss tube. So <laughs> if my memory is not completely crazy i started this last week thursday yeah i think i think so finished it in one day i believe i didn't think i would because it's it's just a madhouse right now but i i kept stitching on it and then faster than i thought it could be done i had it finished so i don't know why i keep procrastinating uh the next box to fill I think is this one up here I believe I know we are going up I think it's this one and yeah let's let's see which character will be next I mean it's August so August means fireworks and it usually means that Isabel is let out of the um uh, what is it called uh something center <laughs> So she's finally allowed to get out of there. So maybe it's finally going to be Isabel. Though I still expect her to go right next to Tom Nook. Hmm. We shall see. This is still looking fantastic. I've seen one person in the group showing her 
um, whip and she has filled in all the boxes full coverage. Kudos to that person, she really did backgrounds for them. Um, the only character that had already charted background is Gulliver up here and Gulliver has a bit of sand and she basically filled it all out. It, it looked really fantastic. I would never have the patience for that. Um, I'll be fully honest with you. I'm not a fan of full coverage and this is already as much full coverage as I can bear. So I'm trying my best to remember for all three of my whips today to name all the stuff I'm using. So this is a stitched on a 28 count Quaker cloth by hand dyed by Rolanda. She has an Etsy shop. This is a one of a kind. Um, doesn't have a name. It's a very light, light blue with a bit of gray in it. I think you can actually kind of see that in the slide. I'm once again using natural daylight plus my desk lamp, which is not quite as cold as a daylight lamp. So I hope that the lighting is kind of okay. The colors look more or less true to me. Maybe a little bit cool, but it's closer than it usually is. And I'm using all the cold called for um, DMC flosses. So I've, I've not exchanged anything except I think I changed out a few of the backstitching colors to something darker because I wanted it to stand out a little more. A lot of the backstitching, like I said, just vanishes. It's it's particularly grievous in these two. So they, they are really annoying me. <laughs> ah, so giving you a bit of a close up because Stuart or again made it possible for me to practice my French knots and I think they came out quite okay. The one on the furthest left right over her nose is the one I think that came out the the least good. <laughs> you know, that's that's very good English. <laughs> um came out the worst. But um it is still I think still kinda okay. At least I used the right color. So yay me. Kitty, I didn't lift that so you could lie down there. Um yeah. This this is fun. This is fun, even though I become a master procrastinator every time the 15th rolls around. Um, Needleminder, I bought this pin off of um, AliExpress. I'm pretty sure this is not a licensed pin, but um, I've seen it sold all over the place. Maybe it is okay, I don't know. Turned it into a Needleminder myself. It's just for my personal use and it's absolutely cute. All right, that's project number one. Project number two is the Alice in Wonderland stitch along by Owl Forest Embroidery um, out of Russia. And can we adjust the lighting just a little bit? I don't know, probably not. Um, they are hosting a stitch along that has now run for 12 weeks, I think it is. This was the sixth drop. Yep. I believe this was the sixth drop. And it is going to run until mm, February next year. Just rem don't remember if it was middle or end of February. But it's going to run over into the next year. So this one is clearly not included in my no stitch alongs for 2021 because I am going to finish it. So just just saying, I'm, I'm planning not to start any. <laughs> so... We will see this one next year too. This um, drop was kind of small. Last time I showed you the big foot here with the eat me cake and um, the mouse or rat, I don't know, and Alice in the water and, that, and stuff. So that was all the drop from last time. And this time we had the house with giant Alice in there. We have this planty thing and a little bit of green border. Um, this is caught up now until when you see this tomorrow and I think the next thing because it is not all the way down um, The next thing we will get is this long border We stitched the top border all the way over to the other side as well on one of the drops and maybe some details here We shall see um, I really liked the little house here Usually I don't like stitching houses and I saw it and I thought, oh, and it is nearly full coverage too. The only gaps are here in the window um, blinds and in the roof and everything else is basically full coverage. But 
I think it turned out pretty good. It does not show very well in this lighting and I have to show it a bit crooked because there is um, a shelf there. <laughs> Um, but I think you can see the variegation at least a little bit in the brown and also in the in the white gray used for the house. It is amazing. This color hasn't been used a lot so far. This white, we have only used it here in the cake and further up in the little glass jars. So it has not been used a whole lot. Can I maybe switch the light over to this side? Will this improve? Uh, I have a feeling that lighting will be my biggest enemy to the end of the day <laughs> with this filming stuff. So yeah, I enjoyed this much, much more than the giant foot. <laughs> so I'm looking forward to what's, what's up next and yeah, I'll keep you posted. It will be in my next floss tube again. This is the one piece I show every single time. This is stitched on 32 count um, vintage country mocha by Zweigart. So pretty standard fabric. You should be able to get everywhere. And it is using the colorful floss kit provided by Our Forest. They dye their own floss as well. So they, they um, sell their own designs. They dye their own floss. And they also sell needle minders in their shop. These, these easy to use badgy needle minders. They are very strong and they have tons of them. Always fitting the patterns and um, the stitch along. So if you like these little things, give it a, a try. I have a whole collection now because they include one of them in every kit they sell and I have a ton of these kits. And I've also, when I purchased the floss for this stitch along, bought all the Alice in Wonderland themed batches they had. Um, the pattern for this is free. So if you do not want to buy their floss, there is a DMC conversion and you don't have to pay, pay anything for the pattern either, which is amazing, but they always do that for their stitch alongs. Um, they are very gracious like that. Um, you can find it on their webpage um, in the charts and free charts section. It updates every second Friday, um, I think about 4 or 5 p.m. my time. So Russia is an hour ahead. I think it's like 4 p.m. So waiting for tomorrow when you see this actually day after tomorrow. And last but not least, we have the cozy cafe and we have a kitty. Yeah, hi kitty. Could you move over? Thank you. We have the Cozy Cafe and it drives me completely insane how wonky the picture this plus fabric always is on my frames. <laughs> I don't know what it is. They use Zweigart um, linen and I usually don't have an issue with the Zweigart linen on this frame type. But with picture this plus it's always so wonky that it's always all warped and driving me nuts. Um, Drop number five was this can of sparkling water. Even though I wonder, it's called fruity bubbles. It's not really water. Looks like a lemonade thing. <laughs> Uses a lot of the colors in the in the stitch along. It was a lot of fun to stitch. Um, I think it's a bit hard to see, but um, it has these little uh, kiwi wedges. You are trying to throw stuff off the table, aren't you? Um, it has this little uh, kiwi wedges in here. It has the dragon fruit. And I think this is supposed to be star fruit because it's star shaped. Not entirely sure. It's not exactly the color I know star fruit comes in. It's usually more a bit of a light green, but that's what I'm expecting. As always, I have not stitched in where the beads are supposed to go. So in this part, a lot of the brown beads are going to go in as the... Um, seeds for the dragon fruit and the kiwi and um, it turned out really cute i think giving you a bit of a close-up also we have this estimated 2021 text down here so i think we are officially now past the halfway point 
um, as far as total stitch count goes because we've had the text up here and we've had the text down here and also we have stitched the next few of these little thingies here for for this drop and for this drop so I think it's it's slightly over halfway done it is cute I have to think of a way to frame this so it can come and live in my kitchen without getting destroyed <laughs> It is really cute. When I started this out, I was a bit meh about it. I didn't really feel this intense need to stitch it, but I think I'm I'm finally getting into it. There are going to be five more drops. So this one ends in December. It is stitched on 28 count. Um, picture this plus, like I said, in the color opal. And I am using most of the call for flosses I have just exchanged the DMC, I think they are calling for blanc. I have exchanged that one for white silk that I purchased from Silks for You because I just hate stitching with white DMC. It's it's so stiff and always makes the stitches look weird and I wanted to try if if silk works better. And at the point in time when I purchased this, uh, Silks for You Silk was just such a bargain. Um, it has sadly changed now with the um, addition of the VAT for everything. And also they have raised their, their shipping costs a lot. It used to be something like $8 and now it's uh, nearly $18. Um, so yeah, not quite quite as affordable any longer. <laughs> Sadly, there were still a few colors I wanted to have, so I probably have to take the jump at some point and make a big purchase. Um, because then that way it's it's not as bad with all the extra costs. They are more spread out, um, especially shipping. Yeah, so these are my three whips for the second half of July. I am happy to report I'm as of now still caught up on all of my stitch alongs. Um, the downside of that is that I literally stitch nothing else so no stitch along 2022 still stands. Okay plans boring. Um, Friday will be next part of Alice. A Sunday will be the final part of the Queen also the next part of the planet B. You will see those in the next um, Floss Tube I Do. <laughs> okay, haul. Yeah, you've basically messed up the neat little pile of haul I made there. Just a second. Ha. She stood up, now I can be in the spotlight. <laughs> Hi, baby. Hi. Yeah, you are the prettiest of them all. You are. <laughs> Enough, human. Um, okay, for haul this time, I have a few pieces of fabric and a magazine and I think one pattern and then a whole lot of DMC which I usually wouldn't show you, but we are going to do a floss toss. So first up is the last piece of uh, fabric from Fortnite Fabrics. I think last time I said it was the last piece, I forgot that this was still on the road. So this ar arrived actually before the last floss tube, but it was still in the post office at that point, uh, waiting for me to post the ransom. <laughs> So this is called TaylorMade. It is a 28 count um, opal linen. It is their mm, rich, rich and famous club, I think. I'm not entirely sure. It is this pink gray color. It's a bit warmer than it shows on camera right now. This is more of a peachy leaning pink. Um, it is extremely pretty. I'm so sad I had to let go of this, but honestly, Again, no longer cost efficient and I also have so much fabric. I need to stop collecting fabric. So I have to, to do more purposeful buying as far as fabric goes and not so many clubs. 
because yeah they are pretty I like to look at them but <laughs> let's be honest using them doesn't happen as often as it should be and then I told you last time that I had ordered a couple of pieces of fabric from uh, Jukus X Ju Designs on Etsy. She is a fabric dyer from Hungary, which is fantastic because I have loved her fabrics from the first time I bought them. But that she's in Hungary means that at least I have one fantastic dyer that is easy to get for me. <laughs> without any stupid extra costs. So I purchased two pieces of 28 count uh, linen from her. The first one is called Gold Sand and this actually does not show the color of this fabric at all. Problem is that this focuses now on the lamp. This is a bit more true, a little warmer. Um, this is a very pretty light yellow with a little bit of gray in there. I think that shows it a little better. Her fabrics are very subtle. So you very rarely get a fabric from her that is highly variegated, um, highly modeled. This is really, really the height of what you will see from her usually. But I thought this was really pretty and a good fabric for something that needed a bit of color, but not a whole lot. Um, and it's not as lifeless as just a flat linen. So this was the first I wanted to give a go. Again, not bought with a purpose in mind. <laughs> so shame on me. Um, but the next one, the next one actually was... And that is, uh, I think this sliding was today a major mistake. So this is a piece of blue steel. Once again, a 28 count linen. This is, uh, both of them are about a fat quarter. Uh, give me a moment. It really makes no sense at all to attempt a floss toss if the lighting is so bad. So try to adjust it. I think it is slightly better it still shows everything a bit cooler than it actually is but i think it is closer to whatever we had before there so this is a a mixture of the cooler grays in the dmc palette um, and i wanted to see what this fabric looks like it has a bit of a bluish tint but it is mainly gray and it has a fantastic modeling um, I just said that she doesn't do a whole lot of modeling. This has a fantastic modeling. This actually reminds me a little bit of picture this place. So I was thinking about using this with the Snow Queen. I showed that one in my last floss tube and I now got most of the, of the DMC for that. So I thought let's have a look how this looks. So I had... A few of the colors in my stash. Not a whole lot of them. Here are some leftovers from the Dark Queen. And then I had to order a poop ton. A poop ton more. And I think that it mostly looks good. I have one of the silks, sadly the second one got not packed, but I figured that one out. Oh gosh, this is so much, so much floss. It is actually ridiculous. Uh, there are a few repeat skeins in here, so let's pick those out. Mm, pretty sure you are a repeat skein. And you are a repeat skein. Because for a couple of them, we need two. That is a repeat. That one silk is a repeat. And everything else should be. It is a bit tone and tone, but I always have this issue with choosing the fabric. Um, that I want to have a good contrast, but then there is also always the issue of 
um, having a good contrast and it also not being um, too much in your face. So I think I like this. What do you think? A few of these colors blend in quite a bit. For example, this one here, the 3743. I think that blends in a little bit. And this one as well, this is the 3747. But I think it might still work. I kind of want to try it on this fabric. So I have to get a bigger piece of that then because this is by far not big enough for Snow Queen, especially in a 28 count. Um, talked about my reason why I wanted to do it in a 28 count last time. You know the spiel by now. So I think this is what I'm going to go with. I also found a frame and a floor stand. Um, which I can use both for the big mirabilias that are bigger than my uh, current stand can handle and also for the um, Shetland. So that is amazing. It is a one trick pony. So that frame can only be as big as it is. My current one um, can be adjusted to hold the smallest frame up to the biggest that the brand offers, uh, which is too small, way too small for this project. And um, I found this other one, it is from, is it Erlensee or, or Erlensee? I'm not entirely sure if it was the one or the other, but they have um, these roller frames, which work in the same principles as mine do here with these, oops, with these clips down here to put in your fabric so you don't have to sew it on, um, but they are just not adjustable. So. The one size I pick is the size that the frame can handle. I also saw that at least the shop I found the frame in does not have replacement or additional frames in the in the size that I would need for this floor stand, which is a bit of a pity because I usually don't like to take my fabric out of the rods once I have the fabric in. You always see that when I show you the Dark Queen, I um, take the sidebars off, but the fabric is still attached to the rods. Um, I would like to have it that way as well, but I guess I'll have to get used to removing the whole piece from the frame after I finish working on it. Because I don't want to, to force myself to work my way through a whole shutterland before I can touch my bigger mirabilias. <laughs> I think that would be the worst thing ever. So yeah, I think I'm going to go with the blue steel from Extra Design as no, no, no. You are cute. You are not that cute. <laughs> um, for this piece, let me know what what you think about that. But I think it's it's kind of a good choice. Are you eating my floss? Seriously, cat. Are you seriously eating my floss? That can't be tasty. Yeah, I know, the plastic bag it came in, that's tasty. Um, and I said it's nearly all the floss because I'm missing the one silk, I'm also missing one DMC. So instead of uh, shipping the DMC 612 that the pattern calls for, they accidentally sent me a third skein of 611. But they are going to fix it, I contacted them and they are going to fix it. So that's the floss toss I wanted to do. I love this water lily silks. They are just so soft and luscious. Very, very much in love with them. So that was the big floss purchase. And then with extra design, you always get a tiny little present when you order from her. Sometimes it's some of her hand dyed floss, sometimes it's a tiny, tiny piece of fabric. So this time it's a tiny piece of fabric. It is a 28 count piece of uh, linen again, and the color is called Baby Sheep. This is this super, super light, creamy yellow color. And how big is that, that, pe mm, that piece? It is a seven, by I would say four and a quarter that you can actually have uh, four and and two eighths. 
that you can uh, four and two eighths, right? <sighs> Not quite four and a quarter that you can use. <laughs> Inches drive me crazy. I have no idea how you Americans can do that. It's it's such, such a complicated system. Hey, pop, pop, pop. I know you want to lie on the fabric, but please. <laughs> Getting that on is such a piece of work. So then, of course, as every month, I got the next um, little sampler of the month by Cottage Country. Country Cottage Needleworks. So this is August, a beachy theme, which I totally dig. Most of the time when something is like a calendar theme, August has the tendency to be not my favorite. And as it happens to be my month, because it's my birthday month, I am chuffed that this time around I actually like it a lot. Um, I think September has also been released, but I can't currently... I can purchase it, but it's all pre-order, so I usually don't because it holds your whole order back. I'm going to wait until the shop has it actually in stock. I'm not actively working on those, so it's it's not so um, urgent to get them. And then my last purchase is the Just Cross Stitch 2021 Halloween edition. I have filmed... A flip through of this and um, I am going to do my best to have that up tomorrow. So when you're seeing this on uh, the 29th, I hope it will be up on the 30th. Keep your fingers crossed. It is a very fun issue. I have already kitted up this piece here. This is the Autumn Lane Stitchery um, chart, one of them. They have two in here. That's one of them. And I just, when, when I first saw it, I knew I had to get this magazine just for this one. But there's a lot in here that I like a lot and quite a few pieces I want to stitch. Um, so actually some of them are on the front cover. I like this little cat here too. <laughs> it's so much fun. And this is a witchy stitcher piece. Fantastic. So yeah. Oh, this is a Lindy Stitches, also very fun. It matches the one she did last year. She already had one of these little black cat silhouette things. Hi, baby. Yeah, you're my favorite not black cat. <laughs> so yeah, stay tuned for the flip through. Um, hopefully tomorrow. Okay, I'm sorry for being so scatterbrained today. I think it showed a lot. Um, I've, I've had a few weeks of, of madness, um, just taking all the energy out of me. And when I'm tired, my, my English slows. <laughs> I've had a coworker who told me, I can always tell you're tired because you take so much longer to find words. Um, so yeah, this, this seems to be a clear indication when I need to take actually a brain break. <laughs> it's not working very well. I was so tired yesterday and then I went to bed and I was nearly asleep, flipped off the light and I was wide awake. This one here totally dug it because I spent like two hours scratching her belly while she was sleeping and dreaming. Um, but I didn't think it was so much fun. <laughs> Anyway, I don't want to ramble on. I hope you have a wonderful day. I hope I can show you the flip through tomorrow. Depends a little bit on on the time I have to um, actually upload because these longer videos take a little bit longer. But I'm going to try my best and I hope you enjoyed this. Come back again Saturday, Sunday for the new diamond painting theme of the month and the wrap up of July. Okay. Stop trying to think, Heike. <laughs> Bye, guys. <laughs>